What's going on, y'all? It is a day in the life of living in an RV. I think I have a giant gold number nine over my head. Does it show up as a nine? Maybe it's backwards. Kira just turned nine recently. But, uh, yeah, it's a day in the life in the RV. I am going to, well, get a drink, but I am going to install a Cat6 Ethernet connection on my wall facing my bed because that's where I sit, that's my office for working. So the plan is, I've got a lot of the networking stuff set up under the stairs in our fifth wheel, and now I'm gonna run cable along with water pipes that go up to our bathroom sink, which is also where the cat litter goes. So you can see where the cat litter goes. And then I will cut a hole in the wall that goes facing the bedroom. I already have a little uh, plate that can go right there that's got two outlets and then uh, just going to wire it up. I just so happen to be an IT guy that knows how to wire outlets and make cables. I'll get back to that later and talk more about IT guy that knows that thing because a lot of people they just assume oh you're an IT guy you do all the computer things. That's not true. What you doing Kira? This is my pan that I use for the cat litter. And this is where we put the cat litter. Yeah, it's a little dirty. I definitely could stand to get down there and wipe down some of those pipes a little bit better. But these pipes go down into the pass-through storage, so I am going to poke some Cat6 cables through there. And then cut the hole in the wall over here. So that I then have an outlet on this wall for my laptops. So there's where the pipes go up into the sink area and then come over through that hole and then down here. Now this is where I've added, I've got my network attached storage, it's a bunch of hard drives, I've got a battery backup, and I've got this InstiConnect router right here which I'm planning to mount right up here. But there's some screws sticking out and I want to file those down first. I added this outlet. The cool thing about what I did with this outlet, this is a 20 amp outlet, 20 amp cord, and it's got a 20 amp dedicated circuit breaker. I stole it from the washer dryer. We decided we weren't gonna use a washer dryer, so I left all the wiring in place so someone could come after me and on, on connect, ha, disconnect this plug they could disconnect that plug and reconnect the washer dryer if they so choose, but they'll have to pull the circuit breaker panel off of there in order to make that change. But then this gives me a dedicated 20 amp circuit for this network equipment, which it'll all run through that battery backup. I could have done just a single plug, but I decided might as well at least have a secondary one there if I ever wanna run an extension cord or any other kind of tools I need an extra cord. There. I also built a box for my Starlink. You can see the wooden box mounted up there to the ceiling with the blue wire coming out. And then the hooks on the other side over there with all that wire, that's the Starlink cable that goes out to the dishy. So last summer when I was using Starlink, I would have all my tools and stuff laying out here and I would just literally lay the Starlink on top of stuff and throw all the cable in here. And then it made near impossible to come out here and get any tools or do anything. So I wanted to mount the Starlink facing up into our bedroom and bathroom and then put hooks on the wall for the cable so that they are out of the way. I can unwind as much as I need to run out to the dishy wherever it's at and keep any leftover uh, cable on the hooks. Hard to 
get the right angle so I can. I'm gonna start by poking up through the foam. So they got some spray foam in there. <laughs> Although I can already see light. You can see light coming through up there. I have a light under the sink. So that definitely shows me it's already got airspace coming through up there. So I'm just gonna kind of poke through some more so I can push the cable up through there. Ultimately, I would like to get two Cat6 cables up there. But since I can only unwind this one at a time, then I'll have to do it one at a time. That's what an ethernet cord looks like. Just plain blue, looks like a straw. It has what's called four pairs in there. Eight different wires. Oh. I guess I need somebody on the other end to pull. <laughs> the, the foam's kind of holding it up there. Okay, so this is kind of a proof of concept. First step is... <laughs> It's not very flattering for me to lay down like this and look at the camera. <laughs> so just the first proof of concept was proving I could get the Cat6 cable with the hoses up there. The next thing I got to do is I'm going to go drill a hole from the sink side towards my room. After I drill the hole, then I'll, I've got a little saw that you would use to cut out like drywall. Should hopefully work on these types of walls we've got. If not, I'll have to get more creative. Back to the bathroom. I love my folding step stool. Great for things like this. So here's my plate that I've got. Don't remember where exactly I got it, but I've got, a, as I call it, a bag of tricks for doing networking stuff. And I just realized <laughs> it's the wrong point. I said I needed four pairs, eight cables, and I just realized this is three pairs, six cables. I have to go to the store. Well, if I could at least get these out, I could save money on buying another plate. I mean, the plates aren't that expensive, but one of these, one jack at Ace Hardware at least, for what I need is like $9, $10. Okay. That should still work. I should be able to use that. Yeah, these are, uh, it's missing. In fact, some of these <laughs> colors are completely wrong. But if it had at least had the copper in there, even though it wasn't marked properly, I could have used it. But yeah, this is kind of useless. I don't even know what would use that type of jack. So I gotta go to Ace. It's the place for the helpful hardware man. I'm an ace. Not much for taking the big camera around walking around inside of ace. Come down there. Air conditioner. All right. So I got two Cat6 cables. These will work. A little pricey at Ace Hardware. I mean, this isn't really their specialty. You buy this kind of stuff in mass quantities, you'll save a lot of money. I did see uh, what what I had in there. They have it. It's Cat3. That's with the one where it has six wires. And if I remember correctly, those are the, for the fancier telephone systems, like when you're in an office and you've got really nice telephone systems, they usually would use those Cat 3s. I dabbled in that a little bit and that's probably why I had a, a leftover two of them, pair of them. So 
but they are not gonna do me any good as they're missing two important wires. All right, so back to the house. The house? You know, it's really funny. Speaking of RV life, so when you live full-time in the RV and you don't have a house or a home base, you tend to call your RV your home or your house. And we've actually gotten really good about it as we drive away from the RV park and go places and when we come back to the RV park, we're like, we're home. Nobody fights me on that. Nobody argues with me. They're all just like, yep, we're home. It's kind of cute. Back at the RV. Let's get to work. So it's back to uh, drilling holes in the walls. What? Hi. Hi. You have a gold number nine over you. Am I nine? Am I nine? You're nine. 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 I might just try using a, uh, a box cutter then. Try to cut around, try to minimize how much I have to cut so that the screws can then still grab onto the wall above and below it to hold the jack in place. I don't, I was thinking I would need to cut through both sides, but I think if I just feed the cord through on the sink side, I can minimize what's cut on the sink side. sure if the camera was focusing on that. All right, so I drilled a hole coming straight through so I knew where to start and then I used a box cutter to kind of outline 
what would be the back of this. So this should fit snug in there as these parts right here should fit inside there. And then I've got plenty of space on the top and the bottom for the screws to grab through on the top and the bottom to hold it in place. So now it's time for me to cut this open and to start wiring it up. So you've got your, your color coatings. Got all my color coatings I need right there so the cable will like lay down here. And then all the colors that are in here will split out. And I have what's called a punch down. That'll punch them down in nice and hard so they'll make connection. So then it'll all be wired properly to communicate through that hole. So four pairs, orange, white, and orange, blue, white, and blue, brown, white, and brown, green, white, and green. Cat 6 also has extra things inside usually, like some kind of protectant to block signal from going back and forth between the cables, which can cause signal degradation. And then some kind of an insulation like this, trying to keep any uh, static build up or anything out of it as well and the wires are a little thicker and stiffer for cat 6 as opposed to cat 5 and then usually this outside shell of the wire the coating is usually thicker as well so i've unraveled it and now i'm gonna got my snips tanya found those for me outside i'm gonna cut this insulator inside because that's just going to get in the way of the jack at the end all right, so I've got half of it wired up. If you're doing it right, you'll actually cut the wires off on this side. I still have to wire up the other side. I have a professional crimping tool that actually has a sharp end. So as I push it and force it down in there, the sharp end can help me then to cut off the little loose extra pieces. They give you like a crimping tool with this. It's not gonna cut it up and make it look nice though. Just tools of the trade, I guess. Decent looking finished product right there. Everything's trimmed off the side. Everything's pushed down into the correct spots. You typically are gonna use 256T568B wiring is gonna be your normal. I don't remember exactly why there's an A and a B, but everything I've ever done has always been B. So I made sure to match that up and then it'll match everywhere. When you're working with these cables, don't be afraid to pull several extra inches through to help you kind of finish it off and make sure it's done right. If you try to do it too short, you'll find yourself more frustrated trying to finish the job. So yeah, this is kind of wasted copper that will go in the, into the trash. So I've got my second jack that I want to wire up. Probably won't use both of them, but I'm in the mode, I'm in the process. I should just go ahead and cut the cable on the other end, make sure it's the correct length that I need to reach over to the switch that I'm gonna use, and then start the whole process again. Push another cable up through from the pass-through storage, feed it through here, and uh, get another jack made. Once I've got both my jacks made, then I'll go ahead and, and screw this uh, face plate onto the wall so it'll all be set so even though i probably won't use the second one as often at least it'll already be wired it'll already be, be done i'll just have the cable kind of hanging down i don't have enough ports on the switch right now so in the future i'll probably need to get a bigger switch with more ports but you've already got the cable done and run and you're ready to go 
that'll make it uh, easier. So, like I said, I'm in the mode of doing this right now. I might as well just finish and do two cables. All right, two cords wired up. I'm gonna put the faceplate on. So if you put it up in the right order. I need to pull it back through some on the sink side so that the plate can get all the way up to the wall. Cool. That is how Skittles kitty litter goes in there. We took the door off and then we uh, just put the door in our storage unit. But Tanya is thinking she would like to do like a curtain right here. So we're thinking maybe just a real simple curtain, maybe stapled to the back of this board right here, hanging down. Something we could hook to the side when we need to work under here or clean. That way we don't have to see it and she can have more of her own personal space. So my next mission, I've got the router up there, I'll have to run power down. But I put my NAS here and the power and I want to use some brackets to uh, hold it in place. Thought I got more brackets than that, but yeah. Basically I just, I don't want this thing bouncing all over the place. So I'm gonna put like a L bracket on the top and something on the side. Just try to keep it from being all over the place. So years ago when we had a house, I bought a bunch of Ikea furniture and I wound up with a bunch of these little felt pads that are adhesive. And I've just been using them all over for these IT modifications I'm making to the RV to just kind of soften the touch. So I'm gonna like basically put some around this bracket before I put it down so that it will give a soft application to the top of that NAS. All right, I put two on the top, kind of just keep it from bouncing up. I need this to be able to come sideways so I can plug and unplug things from the back. We'll see how it lasts. It's a little bit more durable and cheaper. The hard drives here, got one on the front, one on the top. I wanted to put something on the side, but I'm not entirely sure 
I'm having a hard time reaching it. So we'll see. I may revisit that before we leave. Now I'm going to put my uh, Cat6 ends on my two cables I made earlier so I can start getting it all wired up. You can see there how I I fed extra cable through. And these are the easy jacks, so they make it a little easier. There are more difficult ones you can buy. But this is how I learned. I got extra cable fed through. I validate that I've got it in the color pattern that I want it when it's on the other side. Which is easy to look up. I said I always use the 568B. So now I will use my crimping tool, which will cut the extras off. And it will press this down in the back so that it doesn't come undone. And now I've got a cable. This was for my top jack. Next I'll do uh, the bottom one. So I pretty much got it to where it's working. The bottom jack's working. The top jack does not work. I'm going to have to readdress that cable later. Doesn't have to be done right now. I'm just going to do some uh, zip ties with some cable management, make it a little bit neater. And then I'm going to start putting a lot of this junk that's out here on the table. It's not junk, it's tools and stuff. But I'm going to put that away because we got possible thunderstorms and a big cold front coming through at midnight. So I'm going to put y'all away. Thanks for watching today. And uh, we'll pick up tomorrow. Stay fresh, cheese bags.